In some of the previous lectures, we, we've talked about uh, some of the postulates we've developed. The last postulate we talked about was what was called the maximum dissipation postulate. So let me write that down uh, for you. All right. So the maximum dissipation postulate um, stated the following. So maximum dissipation postulate. Okay, what did it say? It said that uh, it was written as sigma ij bar, which was some uh, point on the yield surface, so that's where f equals zero, minus sigma ij a, which was some point inside the yield surface, any point actually inside the yield surface, times d epsilon ij p, the plastic strain increment. We said that must be greater than or equal to zero for the class of materials that we're studying. Okay, so at first glance, it's not obvious what this tells us or why we might care. Um, so let's try to visualize this. Okay, so say to visualize the significance, um, significance, what we want to do is we want to take the second order tensor and, and write it, write all the second order tensors as um, 6D vectors. So, uh, so we write the second order tensors uh, tensors uh, as uh, 6d vectors right and we can write them as 6d vectors uh, because there's they're, they're symmetric so there's only six unique uh, quantities okay so so what that means is that if I if I write this uh, uh, let's call it the maximum dissipation postulate then from up here becomes Sigma bar and I'm putting an underline under it to indicate it's a vector now, uh, minus sigma a bar, so now these are vector quantities, dot uh, d epsilon plastic increment, right? And so what I did was I replaced this sort of double contraction on the second order tensor with a traditional vector dot product. Okay, and I did that because we know, um, we know something about dot products that uh, obviously, they tell us something about orthogonality, so it's a little easier to sort of come to grips with the, the implications of this. And that's going to be, of course, greater than or equal to zero, and we'll call that equation one. Okay? Now we're going to make the following assumption. Uh, we're going to assume that the, the yield surface is smooth. So, assume the yield surface is smooth, and that has a specific meaning. Um, when we talk about something being smooth in mathematics, it usually means it has some sort of a derivative. Um, and what we mean here is that we have some well-defined um, uh, tangent at any point on the on the surface. Uh, we'll, and, and we're going to be formal here and say it's a hyperplane, right? All that means is that it's a it's a plane in some six dimensional space, but I'm going to draw it as a plane on <laughs> in 2D. Okay. And the other thing we want to ensure is that there exists a normal uh, direction to the surface. Okay? So remember, the direction will be a six-dimensional direction, but it'll be a direction nonetheless. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, let's, let's draw a picture. So I'm just going to draw some, some surface. This is supposed to be a surface in, in sort of 6D space. And I'm going to say that there's a location there that we will call uh, sigma bar, right? That's sigma bar. And there's a tangent plane to it. Let me, I should just draw it from here. Okay, there's my tangent hyperplane. Okay, so let me label that. There's a tangent hyperplane. Okay. Don't forget that this surface is f equals zero, right? That's the, the yield function equals zero on that surface. Um, and what I also want to talk about here is let's what, what does our, our equation say? Well, if I, I should be able to pick any sigma a in here. So let's start with let's say let's say that is sigma a. And then this quantity, right? That quantity is sigma bar minus sigma a. It's that vector, right? Oops, let me 
keep my superscripts and subscripts right. Sigma A. Okay? But I could choose a Sigma A anywhere. Right? I could choose uh, I could choose Sigma A over here. In which case I'd have a vector that runs like this. Or I could choose Sigma A up here if I wanted. There's nothing I didn't ever specify Sigma A and it could run like this. Okay? And what did our what did our maximum dissipation postulate said? It said that the now, re restating it in vector terms, it said that the dot product of any of these vectors with the plastic strain increment must be greater than zero. Okay, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna propose that what that means is that the plastic strain increment must be normal to the tangent plane. So I'm gonna say that must be d e p like that. Okay, and we can see we can see why that would be. So let's suppose. For example, that I um, that I ran of that that this plastic strain increment was not in this normal direction, but was in in a direction, let's say, vertically. Well, my, my maximum dissipation postulate would hold as long as sigma a was over on this side, but it certainly wouldn't if sigma a was over here. And similarly, if I chose a, a plastic strain increment that was in this direction, then it would hold for this sigma a up here, but not the sigma a. Uh, the vector that uh, is defined by sigma a and sigma bar wouldn't hold for this region, right? So the only only way it works uh, is if the plastic strain increment is normal uh, to the surface, okay? So let me write that down explicitly. Um, because the maximum dissipation postulate or equation one from above uh, must be valid uh, for any sigma a, okay, so for any uh, sigma a inside the yield surface, uh, inside the yield surface, okay, because that's true, then the implication is, is that the plastic strain increment d epsilon p is required uh, to be normal or it could be to be normal to the tangent at that location. So it, it is required uh, to be directed, let's say, along the outward normal. Okay? So we sometimes you'll see this called the normality rule, right? Okay, and we had already talked about that previously, but we didn't really prove it or derive it. So all of this work that we've done so far is really to take the, the uh, Drucker's postulate, uh, develop a, uh, a new postulate for um, the, the complementary uh, uh, work during a stress cycle, um, and, then, and then from there to get to the maximum dissipation postulate, which we then just use to show that the plastic strain increment must be normal to the yield surface. Okay, so that's that's one of the the uh, the uh, outcomes of the maximum dissipation postulate. One of the the um, uh, significant significant um, uh, features that it that it demonstrates. So I want to talk about one more. So let me let me um, I want to talk about one more uh, uh, significant outcome from this maximum dissipation postulate. Um, again, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and consider another smooth yield surface. Okay, so consider another smooth yield surface, just like I talked about before. The the implications being the same. Okay, but in this case, we're going to allow a concave region, but allow a concave region. Okay. So what might that look like? That might look like sort of a uh, a lima bean of some sort. There we go, something like that. There's my region of concavity. And if I were to choose a location here, let me choose a point right there, and call that uh, sigma bar now, right? Then I can define my tangent plane kind of similarly. I can keep coming through the point. Hopefully you get the idea, right? 
And I know that my my uh, plastic strain increment d epsilon p must be normal to that. And I have I I'm going to just remind you still of the the maximum dissipation postulate says right that I have sigma minus sigma a dotted with d epsilon p. Put p in the superscript d epsilon p must be greater than or equal to zero, right? That's the maximum dissipation postulate. Well, in the case of a, if we had a concave region of the yield surface like this, um, then I could choose, let's say, sigma A there. So if this was my sigma A, right? You can see that sigma A now, uh, or this this vector here, which this vector is defined as sigma bar minus sigma a. So this vector dotted with the the um, increment in plastic strain is actually violates this quantity. It's negative. Okay. So uh, what we can see is that uh, a convex or a concave rather a yield surface uh, violates the the maximum dissipation postulate. Okay, uh, therefore, we have a conclusion here. Therefore, the, the yield surface must be convex. Okay, so that's why all of this matters. Um, it, it helps us to define some of the, the, the yield features of, of what's gonna, what, what we actually call standard materials. Uh, but but th those are the reasons that, that we've, all that we've prepared for in the last uh, couple lectures are important. And then we're going to now, in, in the following lecture to this, we're going to go ahead and relate um, the normality uh, of the, the plastic strain increment back to our, our conventional um, constitutive law for plastic uh, deformation.